Today I'm going to be showing you how to build this neon sticker brush and we're going to be making it completely in Procreate 5. Even better, this brush is going to be free on my Gumroad page and the link will be also in the description box of this video. Now we're going to be building this brush but if you stick around until the end of this video I'm going to show you how to tweak the white outline of this brush because we're going to be using the amazing Combine Brush tool in the Brush Studio on Procreate 5. My name's Leo and you're watching Ghost Paper, so now let's get to it. All right, now that we're here on Procreate 5, let's get started with our brush. So just follow the steps here as we create this brush, as I show you the settings, so you can create the brush on your side. So the first brush we're going to be creating is the colorful brush. So I'm just gonna tap on the settings here and go one by one here, starting from the top. So on stroke path, we're gonna leave the spacing at 6%. Streamline, we're gonna leave it at about 85%, just so we get a nice kind of calligraphy brush that has some auto correction, but nothing too extreme, so that it still holds a little bit of the human error onto the brush itself. On both jitter and fall off, we're gonna leave it at none. In terms of tapering, this brush doesn't really have a lot of tapering. It's really up to you. If you do wanna have some tapering, you just have to apply some uh, the pressure graph here. You just have to set it. And once you set it here, you also have to set it here on Apple Pencil pressure on the size slider. But I'm just gonna go back here and we're really not gonna be using that for this brush. I'm just gonna zero it out. So everything is set to none here and tip as sharp. Same goes with the touch feature because we're also not gonna be really creating a different setting from where when we draw with a pencil uh, and when we draw with our, uh, with our finger. So now moving to shape, the shape source is going to be a very easy and quick one. We're just gonna click Edit, Import, Source Library, and from the source library that already comes with Procreate 5, we're gonna be using the hard uh, shape right here. So we're just gonna click Done, and that is correct. In terms of the shape behavior, uh, leave scat scattered to none, rotation 0%, count one, because you really don't need um, to tweak that number right here. Count jitter, we're gonna set it to none. Randomized, we're gonna leave it checked. And then azimuth, we're gonna leave it none, uh, unchecked. Flip X, flip Y, unchecked. And in terms of brush size, it's also a matter of preference. If you do uh, actually squish this circle right here, you, do, uh, you actually create some kind of a ribbon kind of brush. But in this case here, we actually do want to have a very nice rounded brush. Pressure roundness and tilt roundness at 0%. And very important, leave the shape filtering to improved filtering. Now on the grain source, we're gonna click edit, import, source library, and the one we're using is actually the blank one. You can apply any shape that you actually want to, but just for the sake, uh, just for the purposes of this video, we're gonna be using the blank one. So I'm just gonna tap on this one, then hit done. And uh, in terms of settings over here, we're gonna leave it on moving and movement stamp all the way to the uh, beginning of the slider, scale none, zoom cropped, rotation 0%, maximum depth, depth minimum none, depth jitter none, offset jitter checked, blend mode as multiply, brightness as 0%, contrast as 0%, and also very important, leave the improved filtering uh, checked for the grain section. When it comes to the rendering, also kind of important, leave it at intense blending. You could uh, change the modes here, and some of these modes, actually they do change the uh, opacity. Intense blending is the mode that actually um, provides the best, most vivid results. So we're gonna leave it with this one, and on blending flow all the way to the max, wet edges none, burnt edges none, leave it the uh, burnt edges mode to multiply, blend mode to normal, and no luminance blending, not necessary. In terms of wet mix, we're not really messing around with this section. Uh, this, I believe, goes way more for brushes who are kind of like watercolor brushes. 
But now on color dynamics, this is where the magic happens. For the stamp color jitter, we're not really doing this because that effect actually creates that you see every single shape in your brush with a different color. Uh, this is a matter of per personal preference. Maybe that's what you actually want, but we're gonna leave it at none so that we get this really nice gradient that runs across every stroke that we draw on the canvas. So let me just clear the drawing pad. Um, now saturation none, lightness none, darkness, and secondary color also none, because once again, we're dealing with a stamp color jitter here. Now when it comes to stroke color jitter, we want the hue to about 50%. You can crank this up to about 100, but I think for this brush, it's actually looking really cool. If we leave it at 50, saturation all the way to the max, lightness, darkness, secondary color, all the way to the bottom. Color pressure does add a little bit to the effect and actually does it uh, quite a bit to the effect. So I'm just gonna zero so you can see. If we leave it at zero and 0% zero on hue and saturation, you get a color every time you draw. Whereas if you actually have this hue set it to 99 or 100% and saturation at max, you get this really nice gradient that once again runs across the stroke that you draw. So I'm just gonna clear drawing pad, draw our shape again. Don't really have to do anything with color tilting. Now when it comes to dynamics, as I was just saying before, this is a matter of preference. If you do want to apply, if you, if you do want to have a little bit of a pen pressure applied to this brush, we're just gonna leave it at zero on size and opacity. Jitter, leave it to none on size and opacity, none as well. Finally, the last couple sections, Apple Pencil, quite important actually. This is once again what I was just saying about having a little bit of a pen pressure, size at zero, opacity none, flow, we're gonna leave it at zero. This is where we do that effect of running out of ink, kind of effect. Bleed, smoothing, response, set to none. Tilting, zero degrees. We don't really have to mess around with the tilting for this brush. Once again, it's a rounded brush. Opacity gradation, bleed and size all the way back to none with size compression turned on. This doesn't really do a lot for this brush. In terms of properties, stamp preview, unchecked, orient to screen, don't really have to have that option at the moment. Preview, we can leave it about 30%. That's the preview that you see on the thumbnails. Smudge, 50%. That's the maximum on the smudge tool for this brush. Uh, brush behavior, maximum size at 80%, minimum size at zero, maximum opacity set to max, minimum opacity set to 1%. This bottom section uh, actually here is quite important and that's gonna be part of setting up our brush in the first stage. So that about does it for the first brush. So we're gonna hit done and I just wanna show you the effect on a clean layer. So this is our brush at the beginning stages. You can still increase the size and have a really nice kind of a thicker stroke here. So I'm just gonna undo that. And now we're going to create our white outline. So I'm just going to slide here and duplicate our layer. And on the bottom version, I'm just gonna click and rename this to Neon Outline Brush Part 2. And on Color Dynamics, we're just going to zero all of the color, making it go back into pure white. So I'm gonna hit Done. And this is now very, very important, guys. Now we have to combine, but we have to tap our first layer. We have to select the top layer, which is the colorful one, and then select the bottom layer. Do not do the opposite. Do not select the bottom one and then select the top one. So once again, we select the top layer, the top brush, which is the colorful one. Then we slide with the bottom one and then we hit combine. So now once we combine the two brushes here, we see the two uh, uh, thumbnails right here. Then we have to do the following. We have to click on the bottom one and we see the combine mode is set to multiply. We have to set it to normal. Tap normal. And now on the bottom brush, now that we're selected on the bottom brush here, we have to go into properties and we're going to increase minimum size. And just look at what's happening here on screen right now. We're actually getting a really nice uh, white outline around our brush. So now I'm just gonna tap done and test the layer here onto our canvas. And now we have 
our really cool kind of neon sticker brush. So now, how do we actually tweak it? As you can see here, we have just a little bit of a white uh, outline happening on our sticker neon brush. So what if we actually wanted a thicker outline? So we're just gonna go back into the brush studio here. We're gonna go back into our neon outline brush and we just make sure that we're selected with our bottom brush and a maximum size. I'm gonna set it to um, like a much bigger size and just keep scaling up the minimum size. So I believe this is probably as much as it can go. Uh, let me see if there's another way to scale this. One shape, uh, probably not. Take a look here. So yes. So now that I've scaled up this as big as it can be, now when we scale down our brush, the colorful section actually scales down, but we retain the uh, more of a thicker outline element. So now it's just a matter of preference and setting up your brush to do exactly what you want to. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, a like would be super appreciated, as well as make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss any tips and tricks, reviews, and speed paint videos. And that is all for you to become a better digital illustrator. Now, if you want to learn a little bit more about how to create some really cool neon brushes, make sure to watch the video that is on the right side of the screen right here, as you may actually find it very helpful. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Ciao.